Welcome back. I'm Dr. Shauna Shapiro, and I'm delighted to be joining you. We'll begin by simply arriving together. Allow your eyes to close and take a moment to gather your attention here, now, in the body. You might want to wiggle your toes, feel your fingers and hands, and then just begin to soften the body, soften the jaw, soften the eyes, soften the forehead and temples, bringing an attitude of kindness and curiosity to whatever arises. And then inviting in your intention. Why are you here? What is most important? Setting the compass of your heart in the direction of happiness. Something called you here. Trust that part of you. Listen to it. And as you're ready, taking a deeper breath in and out, And then gently let your eyes open, stretch your arms above your head, and we'll begin. So imagine walking into a room where there was someone who really disliked you. This person knows all of your flaws, all of your mistakes, all of your vulnerabilities. They not only see the worst in you, they expect it. How might you feel? And imagine how you might act. Now imagine walking into the same room where there is someone who sees the best in you, who knows all your strengths, and who believes in you. They're on your team, they're rooting for you, and they expect you to succeed. How might you feel? How might you act? What's interesting is a landmark study by Robert Rosenthal and Loreen Jacobson demonstrated the benefits of seeing the good in others. Rosenthal and Jacobson told a group of teachers that certain students in their classes were likely to surge ahead of their fellow students based on the tests the researchers had given them. When retested at the year's end, these growth spurters had indeed made much greater gains compared to their peers. But there was a catch. The growth spurters had been randomly selected by the researchers, and it wasn't at all based on true test scores. The fabrication had been relayed to the teachers. What then made the difference in their success? It was the expectation of the teacher. The teacher's belief in the student's ability actually resulted in true higher test scores at the end of the year. This is remarkable. How we see other people, if we're able to see their goodness, we can actually bring it out. The bottom line, if you seek to find the good in others, you are more likely to draw it out. What this means is we can also learn to see the good in ourselves. We can learn to believe in ourselves, to be on our own team. Just like this little six-year-old girl. A first grade teacher is walking around the room and stops to look over the shoulder of a little girl and asks, What are you drawing, Lucy? The little girl responds, I'm drawing God. The teacher chuckles, but no one knows what God looks like. And without missing a beat, Lucy responds, They will in a minute. So let's practice together. How do we grow our ability to see the good in others? and to see the good in ourselves. One way is to specifically choose a person. It could be your child, your parent, your spouse, your colleague, or it could even be yourself, which is kind of the advanced practice for most of us, and to commit to looking for the good in that person every single day for a week. What I invite you to do is each day set the intention to look for the good, to look for what is beautiful, what is kind, what is creative, what is bright in that person, and to take a moment to write it down. Notice what happens as you start to look for the good in others and in yourself. 
how does this impact your feelings towards this person? And how does it impact their behavior? This is one of the most remarkable things, is that when we see the good in someone, it actually starts to change their behavior. So let's take a moment as we draw this session to a close, and I want you to reflect on what your key takeaway is. What is the one thing you want to remember? It could be the power of seeing the good in others, or the realization that how others perceive us impacts not just how we feel, but how we learn and perform. So take a moment to write down your gold nugget and just thanking yourself for dedicating your time and attention to these teachings, feeling the wholesomeness of these practices and trusting that the seeds you're planting will continue to grow. I look forward to being with you in our next session.